Nice, I'm back. Hey, what's up? This is Ryan Cook, and this week we are carving a Bigfoot, but a small Bigfoot. <laughs> this is a four foot Bigfoot, not a huge budget, so it's gonna be a quick one, one day carving, but I'm gonna do like kind of a how-to on human anatomy, because Bigfoot has human anatomy um, in him. He's a little bit elongated with hands and big feet and that kind of stuff, but at the same time, Human form is human form, and uh, except for the cranium is gonna be a little bit larger, but as far as body-wise goes, that's the plan. So if you're ever looking to carve human form, this should help. We'll kind of talk about how you scale in human body and, um, and, and then also layer in the fur. I mean, there's a lot of room for playing around when you're doing a Bigfoot because really like they're like a Neanderthal, right? So you can, make them long hands and long feet and, and it's not a crazy proportionately correct thing but when you start getting into human form which we will be getting into later this year um that's when you have to be perfect so this is a great way to start practicing human form because bigfoot's have big heads big feet big hands and this is a quick one so lots of fur on them harry in the henderson style face and uh yeah, that's about it. Uncle Kevin's calling, so uh, let's get this party started. Woo! Yeah, baby. So I got the log stood up. I, uh, I, I went and got a different log because I like the color of this. It's much browner and uh, Less work, the one I had behind it, it was already squared up. I'm gonna use it for tables. That's kind of the thing with wood. You have to figure out what's gonna work for you at the time you do it. We're doing proportions. So in doing proportions, when you're doing a human form, it is eight, eight sizes of the head. So if you have the head here, you go down to your nipple, that's one, belly button two, crotch three, bottom of the leg, to the knee is like six, two down to the, uh, two down to the thing is, is eight. It's very easy to find. And when you're, when you're learning to draw proportions, you can just Google it. I'll have found a picture and posted it like right here so you can see it. And that's how I'm going to approach this. I'm, I don't, I'm having a lot of internet trouble today, so I can't template it, which is actually annoying. But at the same time, it's cool because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure it from here down to here. I left this room down here a little bit more because I'm gonna make big feet, it's big foot. So I left it to here. I'm going to measure that, get the eight, the number divided by eight, square it off, and then just go head, shoulders thing. Because really, this Bigfoot's standing like this. It's very simple pose. It's going to be like, you know, and then when you're, you're getting your shoulder length, you take your head that that number is, and you cut it across. And then that's one to your shoulder. And then the other one is the other shoulder. So it's two heads across laying down. So you take my head, cut it off and put it here. That's one. And then same for arms. Arms come down to just past the crotch. And, um, and, and you can do that math by that. So once I get the exact measurements, then I can punch in the head. It always is less than I think. It's probably gonna be like this, which to me is crazy. But if it's proportionately correct, it will look good in a picture when we're done. So right now I take the time I do a little quick version of this. I'm gonna mark it off, square it up, put in the heads, get the proportion right, and do it. So let's go back to montaging. Hopefully that helps. It's Bigfoot and that allows me to have elongated arms and disproportionate in a sense to the point where it's great practice, like I was saying earlier, but it's a thicker log. So I'm just gonna trust my instinct. And, and that is something in carving you need to do. If it feels right, do it. If it doesn't, then step back, look at it, take your time. So right away, I've got the legs punched through I just have to come in from the back and then I'm gonna to start to square them up. It's gonna be a smaller base than I anticipated. My measurements are, though they're right, I'm, I'm adapting to what's gonna happen 
because right now it feels a little short in the leg, the torso is a bit long, but, and the head is crunched. So he's like this, I'm gonna drop the shoulders cause they're a bit long and then push everything down, which I left myself the room. So always try to kind of do that, especially in human form if you're freestyling. If you have a template, then your proportions are correct. But if you're drawing and just going with the flow like I am, be open to adapt because anything can happen. And you want it to look as good as possible. And I'm very confident that this is gonna work good. It's just about finding the way. So head was first, puffed in the shoulders, got the bicep here, got the arms, and just kind of like, working it. it this is whittling for me today i mean i'm just going with the flow having fun and letting go so i i i, I i'm gonna try to kind of push into lessons and stuff and what i can teach you from this but what i all i can say is right now i'm trusting my instinct and number two i'm gonna trust my gut trust your gut when you're carving if it looks wrong it is wrong if it feels wrong it is wrong and until it's there just keep pushing. Jeff Samadoski told me, if you think you've gone too deep, go deeper. I never forgot that. That's something that stuck with me for a long time and will be for the rest of my life. I think it's great advice when you want to push yourself. Now having the legs kind of separated is a huge thing for me. I really think for myself, punching through and having negative space between the legs can really help you get an idea of how much space you need between the crotch and then for some reason it just opens things up it makes you feel like you're moving in the right direction so now i am at the point now where i am starting to detail so i'm using my 25 11 8 inch cannon dime tip bar and i'm just gonna start pulling fur i'm not gonna overthink this one you know like as you can tell like the shape is here started notching in the feet a little bit, but the fur is just gonna be like pulling it down, very similar to bear fur. And, uh, you know, just kind of give them a big face, big mouth, you know, elongated lips compared to where my nose is to here. If you were going for portions, you'd be able to like divide it all up mathematically, where in an ape, it's kind of a little bit different. So, you know, it's kind of just going with the flow. So I'm on to final details. Remember, this is just a quick version of a Bigfoot. I mean, this is a quick one. I really pulled the fur down a lot. I just started to try and like, you know, separate in between the muscles. Like, look at where the chests are. Imagine if he works out, is he big? What's his feeling like? So, you know, you gotta separate your chest, your sides, your torso, your armpit, and just pull the fur from there. And, and then with the face, I'm gonna move into the Makita finger sander. I'm gonna do a lot of like just buffing and some deep lines because he's got that like kind of deep forehead, elongated forehead coming back. And then I'll punch in the eyes and give him kind of a dopey smile and uh, just roughly play with the fingers a bit, burn it, sand it, finish the fingernails, toenails and done. And you can see with the finger sander, it really does the job. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how much I love this tool. And using actual Makita belts is the key. When I have the chance to use this bit by Sabretooth for fingers, I do because it's awesome because it's kind of, you can roll, it's got a nice concave and it's great for like, a, you know. Because for a Bigfoot like this, it's not a huge budget. So it's just accenting fingers, doing the nails. That's like the really what's gonna make it pop. And, um, and just creating a shape that 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 really kind of uh gives you the perspective that it is hand that no one's gonna sit there and look at it like crazy you just do it so it looks right and if it looks right the face is going to be the thing that captures everything with the fur and everything else it'll all be one big harmonious piece 
But other than that, don't overthink it. Grab this pit, and when it comes in handy, man, it's so worth it. I love this thing. So in this video, I skipped on how to carve the eyes because I made a special video on how to carve human eyes and spirit faces and Bigfoot eyes in a quick, quick form. So, you turned out pretty good. If you guys learned anything at all today, give it a like below, subscribe to my page. I'm doing all kinds of videos. I apologize for the noise in the background. There's a lot going on at the shop, but my name's Ryan Cook and I hope to see you again. We got a lot of fun carvings coming up this summer and that's it. So keep your chain sharp, carve safe and be nice to one another. See you later.